Hi guys, so this is going to be a quick overview of the 1Password 4 app for Windows. I'm going to be creating a demo vault using the option that's available in the 1Password app. If it's your first time running the 1Password app, you're going to see three choices available. The three choices are here, which are outlined in this uh, article from the 1Password site. I am new to 1Password, I have used 1Password before, restore 1Password vault from backup. In my case, I've already ran the app before and I already have my personal vault set up, so we're not going to see those choices. But if it were your first time running the app and you've never used it before, you're obviously going to want to click I am new to 1Password. What that's going to do is it's going to do the same thing I'm about to do and create a new vault. So I'm going to create a new 1Password demo vault. And what that's going to do is give you the option of storing that vault in a location on your computer. It defaults to your documents folder in a folder called 1Password. In this case, I am going to call this 1Password demo, and I'm going to save it. Now, that becomes your vault, which you can then transfer with you on things like a USB key or something of that nature. The first thing that's going to happen when you create a vault is it's going to prompt you for your master password. I'm going to use the highly secure password of password123. As you might expect, that's not a great password, and 1Password reflects that here by showing me this bar being in the yellow and saying the password strength is fair. If I made it something like a jumble of a bunch of different letters and characters, it would say, wow, that's a great password. But obviously that becomes difficult to remember. So you want it to be something that's complex, but not difficult for you to remember. So try to think about using a few symbols in there that might be memorable, uh, as well as some random letters or numbers. Okay, so after you've chosen your master password and uh, confirmed that by re-entering it, you can click OK. And what it will do is create your vault. Now, in this situation, since I've created a demo vault, 1Password provides me with a bunch of example entries. In your case, there will be no example entries present when you run the app. What you'll see are logins, which will be blank, and then everything else as well, which will also be blank. Here they have examples in each category. And what I want to do is basically just run through the different parts of the app and what you're able to do with the 1Password application itself. So on the side here, you can see the different categories of items that you can store in your 1Password vault. So out of the different available sections that you see on the left here, you can then view the entries for each section. In logins, which is obviously what most people want to use 1Password for, you'll see the title, and that's a self-assigned title that you've given to the login. Uh, the location that that relates to, in this case, Amazon.com, and then the strength of the password and when that password was modified. If you look below in the app here, you'll see the information about that entry. So the URL indicates the sign-in page for that login. The username is obviously your username for the login. And then the password here won't normally be revealed, but I did click the reveal button. If you click this, it shows you what your password is. That can be useful if your login isn't working automatically or something of that nature and you need to manually enter the password into an interface somewhere. You can also store notes about a login. You can add attachments. And if you want to see more detailed information and be able to edit some of this information, you can click this button right here, which is your typical edit button. And what that does is it brings up a dialog which shows you different information about the login entry. In this case, Amazon, the URL, and down here you'll see some information about the different values, including your password, as well as your username. And you can edit those, although I would suggest trying to use the 1Password extensions for uh, browsers like Firefox, Chrome, and Internet Explorer as much as possible, because the auto-created entries uh, typically work more effectively than if you try to enter your information manually. There's a couple of checkboxes I want to draw your attention to here. These checkboxes will do exactly what they say. You can see that it says use autotype in web browser and send control A before autotype. Send control A before autotype is something which you can use for certain applications. So that would be if you're not typically entering the login into a browser, um, but you're entering it into an application window, something like Adobe Creative Cloud or your Steam login. Some of those application windows uh, do not work appropriately unless send control A before auto type is checked. So depending upon what the application is, you may have to select that. And that's basically what there is to the login entry screen. Other than that, the options that you see here uh, are things like auto type, which is also available 
for your username and your password. And what that will do is it will basically send that entry to whatever window you previously had your cursor in. So if it's not automatically entering your password, for example, you can click in the password field in a web page and then you can click the auto type button and 1Password will send this string to that field in a different page or an application, which can be convenient if you have an extremely long, complicated password like this that you don't want to copy over manually. Your other option is, of course, to copy the password to the clipboard and use your typical paste options that you would like in any other application. Uh, the next item you'll see here is your wallet. What you can store in your wallet are credit cards, driver's licenses, reward programs. You can see here they have the uh, Hilton Honors reward program. Sometimes you can have things like a member ID. If you look at the edit dialog again, you'll see the different fields that are available. Uh, I do want to note that you can also add fields. So if you feel there is something else you need to store about a particular card or something like that, and it's not in a field that's provided, you could add something like a text field called additional users. And then you could say things like mom, dad, sister, brother. And I mean, that's not something that most people will typically need, but it is uh, convenient to be able to add your own custom fields and store information as you see fit. What I'm gonna do is cancel that and you'll see uh, other things here as well as like your driver's license. Again, these wallet items are extremely useful if you happen to do something like lose your wallet uh, when you're traveling or when you're out and about and uh, you need to access some of this information or be able to say call your credit card company and tell them that you've lost your card and you need the number of the card and you need the number to call your credit card company. You'll see here that they actually have fields to provide contact information for your credit card company and that is useful as I mentioned in the event that you lose your card when you're traveling or just if you happen to lose your card and don't have access to that information. Other things you can enter in addition to credit cards and driver's licenses can be seen if you click the new item button and then mouse over the wallet item section, you'll see that you can add credit cards, bank account information, reward programs, memberships, passport information, which I think is great because that's something you never want to lose completely. Even if you happen to lose your passport, it's good to know what your passport number is and know the basic information that's contained in your passport, your driver's license, social security number, and uh, outdoor license. The next item you'll see here is accounts. Accounts can be useful for a number of different things. As you can see, you know, email accounts, instant messenger accounts, FTPs, etc. So basically any account that you might have that has things like a specific IP address that you might need to access, an email account server that you need to keep track of, again your iCloud and iTunes account obviously. So there's a variety of things you can store here that will be useful and sometimes it's hard to remember all the information for things like your router logins and different things like that. So it's nice to have the ability to add these things. There aren't any examples provided in the demo here but if you wanted to you can see how you'd be able to add those. The next thing is software. I've used this personally for a number of different things. When you order a piece of software you'll often get an email with a license key as well as information about the software that you've ordered. You can store that here so in the future if your computer crashes, if you happen to format your hard drive, install a new operating system, any of those things, you'll have the information from your software license available to you here in 1Password. So you'll be able to quickly and easily download the software again and enter the license key that was provided to you without having to fish through all your email and look for those old emails. If we look at the edit dialog for software licenses, you'll see there's an area for notes, there's a title. I do have a tutorial on how to enter software licenses, which is quite quick and easy, but all of this information is quite self-explanatory and straightforward. Another thing which is very generic but useful for some people is secure notes. If you just want to store information, notes to yourself, maybe notes about things that don't really fit into any of the other categories, uh, you can enter it here and that will be stored in your encrypted 1Password vault uh, only to be accessed by yourself when using 1Password and entering your master password. The identities section here allows you to enter identities to be used for web forms. This is useful when you need to enter things like your address, your name into something like a shipping form on a website. 
Uh, and if we click on one of these, you'll see that it shows all of the information associated with the identity. And then if we do enter the edit dialog, you'll see that you can give it a title, you can add notes, then you can enter things like your name, all of these things that might be useful if you were ordering something online or you were registering for a website or something along those lines. There is also a tutorial available on this YouTube channel showing how to create and use identities. Auto filling forms is as simple as right clicking in your browser window and selecting the appropriate identity from the one password shortcut that is available. And that is outlined in the tutorial that's available. Below here, you'll be able to see all the entries, so not sorted into categories. One thing I will note is that I found in the past there were times where I couldn't access a login and I thought it had been lost. And if I clicked on all, I actually managed to track it down here under the all section. So if you ever think something you've entered isn't in the appropriate category, it may just be that it's here for one reason or another. So I would always suggest to check there or check in unassigned and see if maybe your entry has ended up somewhere where you don't expect it to be. Below this, you'll see your trash where deleted logins and other entries will be displayed. And below that, you'll see folders. In this case, they have a few different folders created. And what these are doing is basically storing items from the login section, uh, but that are related specifically to forums, for example, or to shopping sites. Uh, this would be a place also where you could drag something like Amazon. You could say Amazon belongs in shopping because that's shopping, and then it would show up there. It's just a way for you to organize the information in one password in a way that is more intuitive for yourself personally. That's a basic overview of the one password interface. Uh, there are other tutorials about how to use some of the different features of one password, including identities, credit cards, uh, auto typing things to applications and things like that. Um, and I would encourage you to review those tutorials if you need more specific information about any of the functions that are available in this application. When you're done accessing your information from 1Password, it's always a good idea to click the lock button and then your vault is locked and you will need to re-enter your master password in order to access your logins or your other information again. That's a basic overview of the app. I hope this is helpful for some people. Please leave your comments and questions below and let me know if there's any other information you'd like. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.